have you observed anything where this sort of cultural background and workplace culture interact to mute feedback or, or, or impact at all the feedback that people are willing or, or able to give? So I, I could jump in. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, I think it's a particular kind of, of communication style that we have in advertising. Again, it's very aggressive and very assertive and it does not favor the passive. Um, and so again, for in, in America, there's sort of the perception that there's a, a flat structure and so that everybody can engage in these kinds of conversations. But a lot of my, you know, not only colleagues that I've worked with, but uh, current students, you know, they come from traditions in which there's a, a clear social hierarchy um, that you would really not address somebody because of their workplace cultures, um, you know, go into their office, debate with them, fight with them. You know, that's just not something that's that's typically done. Uh, so it does seem to favor a particular kind of communication style and, and not another. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, it's an interesting one. At a at really large organizations and especially at, at Salesforce, there was this concept that was super foreign to me. And it was it was these groups of folks, of diverse folks, um, getting together intentionally, um, you know, with funding from the company. And we've seen this with a lot of times there'll be like an LGBT group. But at Salesforce, there are like 30 of these groups with the idea of kind of cross connecting because we're 70,000 employees, um, folks where they could kind of have those spaces. Um, you know, so we have like a Latin A group, we have a, um, I don't know, various groups for, for different um, folks. And then the idea that there are kind of allies that can come in and, and they would run events and, and learn from those. So they really formalized it in a way that was interesting. Um, I think what happened with COVID is as those in-person interactions went away, it was much harder to figure out like who actually was talking to you in the hallway, right? So mm. um, it kind of felt like nobody was talking to you because you were only in kind of work-related meetings all the time, right? And so those groups became um, foundationally important then. But I, I remember like at one point during COVID being like, I feel like I don't have any work friends. Like I feel mm. like I'm working with a lot of folks that are very different than me and are just not folks that I'm going to to talk to separately offline. And so it was something I definitely had to make a, a concentrated effort to do. Um, yeah, I don't know that I have a great answer for this one, Curtis. Like, I'm interested in your thoughts, too, if, if there are ways that we should be soliciting it better. But for me, it's always been about fi finding allies in the organization or finding that person that does sort of poke their head up at you in the hallway and then sort of allying with that that person. But I feel like that's a very informal answer to what you're talking about.